You know, in my search for the most mid-anime possible, my search landed on a series that a few recommended to me for this reason, by the title of Chivalry of a Failed Knight. I knew going into this anime that I'm not getting anything special, I was planning to be disappointed, and at first, I wasn't disappointed as I thought I'd be. Allow me to explain. After the painfully cringe opening of the first episode with the main character accidentally walking in on a girl in her underwear, oh my, the scene was probably done for a comedic spoof, but even by unfunny anime standards, this was super cringe. Our protagonist is an F-ranked magical knight. His new roommate, the princess of another country and exceptionally talented A-rank knight, looks down upon him and challenges him to a duel. The winner of said duel would obey their master for whatever sick purposes she th had thought she would inflict on him because she was confident she would win. Well, it turns out this F-ranked knight just isn't able to be properly ranked in the current school system and beats her ass. After that, this school and the entire series is now based on a tournament arc. The protagonist has an interesting idea for a story, but he's so bland that even after watching the show, I can't really remember his name. His name was like Kuro something, that was the last name. But his story was bland, mostly underutilized, and then poorly used at the end of the season. It's just Again, interesting idea, horrible execution. <laughs> he does have an incest love story subplot with a younger sister, where she loves him and he doesn't see her that way. Typical anime shenanigans. It wouldn't be an anime without at least one hot teacher, the pink-haired love interest, incest sister, and a side character that is more memorable than the rest of the main cast, and very few mothers to be found anywhere. Oh, this one also has somebody who works at an orphanage too. Don't forget to mark that on your fantasy anime bingo cards. So after incest, we're also introduced to Alice and she's the best character of this series and it's not even a competition as everyone else is so friggin generic. Alice is a dude who claims to have the heart of a maiden and she's super powerful with powers that instantly caught my attention. Look, I know it's edge bait, but I love me someone with magical shadow powers, and Alice was hella cool with it. Also, Alice has one of the only personalities of the series, and that makes her a joy to watch, and I just like the vibe. As time goes on, fights happen both on and off screen. Main character and love interest that isn't incest, the said princess, actually become a couple. Yeah, they confess and are boyfriend and girlfriend, and there's very little edging on that aspect, and actually shows them as a couple, and that has a rough start at first because they awkwardly handle it all and they've apparently never been in a relationship before. And even Alice comes off as pretty based with some of her love advice. So unlike most stories, they have a real love arc that isn't based on edging you to spend time wondering if they will or they won't. It's why I'm actually giving this show a bit of a higher rank than most bad shows which isn't saying much because it's still a 4 out of a 10, as they don't screw with you on the love subplot. They make it a lot more direct and even make a sun deer Sundere, but I like how Nag says it. Wait, how do you say that that Japanese word again? How do you how do you say that? No, 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 no. This the one that starts with a T. Sundere. How do you say that again? Sundere. How do you say that again? Sundere. Sundere. <laughs> Sundere. <laughs> Praise the Sundere. You, you nailed it. You nailed it. <laughs> Okay. This, I know that there's a sun deer and a, ya, a yon deer. Uh, a, um... there... <laughs> do there's do we tell him? Of deer. Do we do we tell him? <laughs> Honestly, I don't think so. Okay. I think that sounds pretty correct. That yeah. sounds like Japanese straight up. Yeah, that sounds, Thank you. that sounds right. Thank yeah. you. I'm right. sorry for the toad voice ruining it. <laughs> Actually be honest and direct with her feelings. I generally don't like Sundare's all that much, but this show actually had me care a bit about one in the shape of an unsufferable pink princess. Hey, hey, don't you give me that look. Two characters is not a pattern. But that's neither here nor there. Main character trains fellow classmates. He and his girlfriend have a bit of a fight because they've awkwardly handled their relationship and make up. After time and lots of boring fluff, some good moments with Alice, they eventually make it to the end of the story. Now, this was brought up lightly before, like episode two, but the main character is the runt of his family. His family descends from a long line of super powerful magic knights, and yet he barely has any magical power or potential. Most people in this world, if they get an elemental power, they can enhance movement speed, turn invisible, control shadows, freeze and melt ice, or burn the living shit out of everyone. And Kurogane, I remembered his name, can f slightly speed up his movement speed. 
His father is explained as to us as never having cared or acknowledged his son before, as everyone was magically powerful, but not him. So the main character has tried his best to prove to them that he's worthy of their affection. Well, this, I should mention, also is explained by his sister's point of view. The younger sister, Incest, mind you. And yes, I'm just calling her that because I don't remember her name. And so at the end of the series, the main character is arrested for being accused of a scandal. The scandal? Being a decent with the princess of another country, don't you know? Now, there isn't a lot of actual evidence, actually none given, as the government agent is actually due to the main character's father's payroll. So, main character is imprisoned, forced to fight while imprisoned for the school tournament, and interrogated every day until the final fight of the series. This abuse of power should feel impactful. It should feel like it's unwarranted or unjust. And yet, when I saw this part of the series, I felt wholly indifferent. Like, as this played out on the screen, my only thought was, man, I wish I had a bingo card with surprise corruption from a central power that's never really explained to tack off, because it felt so bland and predictable like other animes that I wasn't even phased, or surprised for that matter. This magical agency isn't really built up to be anything until they just show up out of nowhere and imprison the main character. The one or two dudes they sent before to mess with the main character were beaten without any loss or so there wasn't any real victory or sense that these guys could do any real harm they weren't built up to hold any real authority beforehand or shown to even be remotely powerful they were shady guys doing and saying shady things before the part of the story so this all feels not only rushed but contrived like where were these assholes earlier so after a talk with daddy that doesn't go well in winning more matches, the final match has him being forced to run to the arena to fight the president of the student council. Yeah, if you didn't predict the ridiculously overpowered student council president on your bingo card, now's the time to do so. So as his worn out body makes it to the school, he's able to get energy back from his girlfriend's love, and he's able to fight the student council president. Important people show up to watch the fight and analyze things based on in-universe authority that's told to us but never shown before or after. So it's all bullshit anyways. Main character squares up with the powerful motivation of equal rights, equal fights. And after the fight with a predictable end that I'm not going to spoil, the series ends with him proposing to his girlfriend and her father, the king of a different country, calling the main character's father to say, Back off and your son. If you don't want him, I'll happily take him as my son. Overall, with my double rating system, critically, I give the show more of a 4 out of 10 still. It has some interesting ideas and plots, but somehow it feels like it had less planning on certain story beats and absolutely zero setup, just like most of Ruby has always had. Nothing is really built up, and what is built up feels so artificially contrived that it feels useless to even think about. Not to mention, this world never establishes what magical knights do after high school as potential careers, so seeing the main character to struggle to graduate from magical knight high school feels hollow and bland because, holy shit, how original to have an anime set in a high school so we can draw easy, generic, and overused set pieces that I swear animators have memorized to the point they could draw them in their sleep, if they ever got any sleep. So we have this idea that magical knights are important, but the fuck do they even do? Don't know, couldn't tell you, never explained. When there's a terrorist situation with hostages involved, the main character and his classmates solve the issue, making police and law enforcement not even really relevant, and they don't feel like they're an actual presence in this world. I mean, seriously, even J.K. Rowling made orders in the universe as magical police and bounty hunters for Harry Potter, but that's neither here nor there now. But the strength that this show had over other shows is the fact that Alice was iconic, and the comedy sometimes Sometimes landed with her and the teacher that bleeds a liter of blood every each day is hot look I don't judge you you don't need to judge me and the romance between the main character and the pink haired princess actually has moments where it's taken seriously and it has consequences to it an extent it's not a good romance don't get me wrong but it's given more details than what most anime give love stories that being actual relevance to the character stories so this isn't a good show at all but it's the beans and toast of most bland boring and generic animes out there, especially ones set in high school. However, this toast is a little burnt on the edges. However, as far as enjoyment while watching the series casually goes, I would give it a 5 out of 10. If it wasn't for Alice, I would say this show is mostly unwatchable as Kurogane, the main character, and everyone else is bland as hell even by generic character trope standards. So let's talk characters, shall we? Kurogane wants daddy's love and affection. He has the generic black hair protagonist smirk when he's about to turn the tables on a fight and receives power from puss, I mean love. He powers up via his girlfriend's love halfway through like two fights. His power is shown to have limitations, but that happens like twice. One dude controls a bunch of golems via a string that the main character can't cut, and another dude straight up has a gun. And Kurogane beats everybody else. Even a dude who uses a bow, 
can turn invisible and make a physical forest appear out of nowhere that he can also fully control. Like, Kurogane should have not won that fight. But by the power of love, the for his girlfriend, Princess, he does. His sister is super powerful, but it's fitting that she uses water and ice powers because she's just as exciting as soft serve ice cream. It's not bad, but it doesn't have any pizzazz or flair like Rocky Road or pistachio flavored ice creams. Her personality is just basic, generic, and anything but unique. I think it's something I kind of despise about most soft-spoken anime characters. They all have this inoffensive blank slate mold to them that the same um, that has the same amount of depth as water you spilled on the kitchen sink. She is soft-spoken, has very little personal details to flesh out at all besides her power and the fact that she's in love with her brother. Ugh. And I kind of hate how this is how a lot of people make characters nowadays. Let's make a comparison at the very least. At least in D&D, meme characters develop after an initial premise. For example, take one that I made called Miriam Softwall. I got her from this meme and used her in a one-shot where we all started at level 5. So I put 4 levels into Cleric and 1 level into Barbarian, so that way instead of using armor, Miriam can just be angry and r have a mother rage whenever she wants, and I kind of liked the setup. So much that I eventually turned her to a pseudo adeptus Hororitus from the Warhammer 40k series by being hilariously angry, we'll say, at elves that were the reason her son died as to further flesh out the meme. Or to take another meme character I made named Nibbles the Ankle Biter. She's a goblin paladin with a mount, so she's a cavalier, goblin cavalier, let's go, who always carries an axe with her as she has a foot fetish and takes one foot from each enemy she kills. It's dumb, but there's enough personality that yeah, it's dumb, but having one niche thing that inspired personality kind of led her to becoming a little bit more chaotic, but having a balance with that, and also having moments of seriousness, as she is a paladin for a reason. But incest, Kurogane's sister, isn't defined by anything except incest love of her older brother. That's not interesting, this is anime. N incest is- I hate- I can't believe I have to say this- incest is you not- is not unique in the world of anime. That's not- that's not a personality trait. That's just generic now, and I hate that it- I say it's generic. I mean, what else can you flesh out with character detail that relates or gives this character a way to subvert or change initial impressions of her for the audience? I couldn't tell you because it you could make a compilation of her talking from this anime and you could use it to help yourself fall asleep at night. I kind of want to make a video based on D&D characters and why they are better than like 90% of fictional characters, but that's for another time. After this, uh, the Sun Deer Princess is just that. She's a tsundere, I think her name's Stella or something, I don't remember. I literally finished watching, when I made the script, I finished watching the show like five minutes before and I already forgotten their names. Um, gosh. But yeah, so she's a tsundere, she can admit her feelings at times, but upfront hides her affectionate feelings and that's her character. Alice by far has more personality in the show, and it's not even that high of a bar to clear, but let's talk about it. In the English dub, Alice is introduced as Incest Kurogane's roommate, but as the main cast meets her, I think both of the Kurogane brother and sister ask, aren't you a dude to some extent? And Alice just says, I can assure you I have the heart of a maiden. And everyone rolls with it and always calls Alice a check. This gives Alice more personality because now, instead of generic anime voice number 15, we get someone who's allowed to be different with their voice and be a little bit more expressive, but sound true to the idea of the- and carry a personality with who this character is supposed to be. And I do appreciate it a lot. Along with the Heart of the Maiden thing, Alice also has some pretty interesting lines. By anime standards, she shows friendship by wishing the best for the main character in a one-on-one -on -one conversation after learning of the past from incest. I should also mention that Incest and Alice are both introduced in episode 2, and during an argument between Incest and Princess, Love and Trust, I did rewatch the series for a few clips here and there, we get this scene. And I just want to say, my man has priorities! But Alice shines as the best character in the show, but that's like saying sea salt chips are better than classic Lay's chips. It's not hard to have more flavor than those, but even basic characterization does wonders for a character to have them seem better than generic, at least by anime standards. This is still a bad show. Like, I'm not defending this show in the slightest, do not get me wrong. It's bad, but not offensively bad. So these characters aren't worth thinking about after the credits roll. Overall, if you like the show, then good for you. As for me, I lost some faith in the phrase artistic integrity while watching the series. It has some interesting ideas, but the execution is so piss poor that I can't even recommend watching this series with friends to mock it. Anyways, I'm a degenerate. No one cares. And I hope you all have a good day.